Have you ever wondered how vaccines actually work? Why it seems that some unvaccinated people do fine, while some others get the disease they're vaccinated against? Perhaps you've read about outbreaks where more vaccinated people were killed than unvaccinated. Some people claim that this means vaccines don't really work at all. One example is the website Natural Health Strategies. Consider this article of theirs, Historical Facts Exposing the Dangers and Ineffectiveness of Vaccines. Here they point to specific places and times. England in the early 1870s, Germany in 1940-45, USA in 60, Ghana in 67, etc. to try and make it look as if it's the vaccines themselves that are causing the diseases. They're attempting to show that, since a greater proportion of the infected population have been vaccinated, this somehow means the vaccines are the cause. The first thing to understand is that this is a correlation causation fallacy. You simply cannot look at two data points and just assume they're related to each other. But the bigger point is, although it seems counterintuitive, this is exactly what we would expect from a sufficiently vaccinated population. It's all based around the concept of herd immunity, which basically means that if enough people in a given area are vaccinated, everyone, even people who are unvaccinated, will be protected. But if too few are vaccinated, everyone, even those who are vaccinated, are put at risk. To demonstrate this, I wrote a computer simulation that anyone can try in their web browser. Later, Robert Webb took my simulation and ran with it, allowing you to play around with many more options, but we'll just look at the basic simulation here. The link is in the video description, and the source code for the program can be viewed simply by viewing the page source. This is a 40 by 10 grid of asterisks, each one of which represents a person. So we have 400 people in this simulation. They're green if they've been vaccinated against a certain pathogen, and red if they haven't. If they're blue, then you need to turn on JavaScript. By clicking the mouse, any one of them can be infected, whether they've been vaccinated or not. They then pass on the infection to each of their nearest neighbors. They get one and only one chance to infect each neighbor, then the person is killed off. This is to keep them from reinfecting other people over and over again, and to allow the simulation to terminate. But what we're really concerned about here is the infection rate. I've set up the simulation so that if a particular neighbor has not been vaccinated, then he has a 90% chance of being infected. If he's been vaccinated, this drops to 10%. Webb's version lets you play around with these values, but for our purposes this should be adequate. No vaccine works 100% of the time, but I think you'll agree 90% is pretty good. So we're testing this in a fairly ideal scenario, assuming that the vaccination works at 90% efficacy. So when we see this same effect later on, namely more vaccinated people being infected than unvaccinated, we'll know it's not because vaccines don't work. The simulation assumes that they do. Also, there will always be a natural immunity in the population. This simulation gives everyone a 10% chance to fight off the disease on their own. Let's see what happens on a completely unvaccinated population. We set the vaccine coverage on the left and the right to zero. You'll see why I divided them out in left and right later. Now we just click on any member of the population to infect them and watch the disease spread. The disease has now killed off everybody, every single member of the population. That's no good. We need a vaccine. So let's say that we introduce our vaccine and give it to 10% of the population. We'll distribute this 10% at random across the population by changing both values to 0.1. Now let's infect them again. Oh dear. It looks like we've killed them all off again. Running this multiple times, we see that we can sometimes get a lone survivor or two here and there among the vaccinated population, but for the most part it kills off everyone, vaccinated and unvaccinated alike. But remember, the simulation assumes that our vaccine is 90% effective, so why does it kill off everybody? Think of your immune system like a prize fighter who can knock out anyone who comes into the ring with him. Now imagine him being beset by 10 people at the same time. No matter how good a fighter he is, he can easily be overwhelmed and defeated. Your immune system is the same way. What's happened is that the vaccination coverage has not yet reached the level of herd immunity. Even if we increase coverage to 50%, we still have the pathogen moving across the population, albeit with more survivors among the vaccinated. In this particular run, we have one lone unvaccinated survivor, 
because he was protected by a barrier of vaccinated people. This gives us a clue as to how herd immunity works. The more such barriers we have, the safer everyone is. Let's move the coverage up to 90%. Here we can click on various members of the population to infect them, but the infection doesn't go very far. Sometimes that person is the only one infected. Other times, some of the surrounding neighbors are killed off as well, but it's nowhere near the complete devastation that we've seen. So what are those websites like Natural Health Strategies doing? They're arbitrarily looking at little clusters like the one we've made here. In this case, only two of the nine people killed off were unvaccinated. Then they make the claim that you're four times more likely to die if you're vaccinated, implying that your chances of survival are much greater if you're unvaccinated. It is true that most of the people who've been killed off were vaccinated, but here's the thing. That doesn't matter the first little bit. What matters is all of the people who weren't killed. Remember that, without vaccines, this same simulation resulted in the infection of every single member of the population. But here, with herd immunity, even if we pop in a second infection, it doesn't go anywhere. We can clearly see that this claim of more vaccinated people dying is a complete red herring. The vaccines themselves are the reason that every other member of the population, vaccinated or not, didn't get the disease. Vaccination not only protects the vaccinated, but the unvaccinated, whether they're people who are allergic to the vaccine, people with an autoimmune disorder, babies too young to be able to be vaccinated, or whatever. And believe it or not, it's some very simple math. The equation for herd immunity is Q of C equals 1 minus 1 over R null, or the critical immune threshold equals 1 minus the reciprocal of the number of other individuals one can infect. In our simulation, that's 8, ignoring those along the edge. So the critical immunization threshold is 1 minus 1 8th, or 0.875. That means that in order to achieve herd immunity, we need 87.5% of the population to be vaccinated to achieve full herd immunity. What natural health strategies and others who make this claim are doing is called the sharpshooter fallacy. This is where you fire an arrow at the side of a barn and paint a target around whatever you hit. What made them choose, for example, Germany in 1940 to 45? What happened in 45 to 50? Or any five year period after that? Now that you understand herd immunity, you can see what's going on without having to research these individual cases. For example, in 1977, Dr. Jonas Salk, who developed the first polio vaccine, testified along with other scientists that mass inoculation against polio was the cause of most polio cases throughout the USA since 1961. You don't need to look up the source to see this is bogus. Now that you've seen how this works, you can see that this is clearly meaningless unless you know how many cases of polio we're talking about and how it compares to the number of cases prior to the vaccine. They do no such comparison. I wonder why? Could it be the number of cases is so small it would be dwarfed by the number of infections that would occur if there were no vaccine? They also ignore the fact that 50 years of technological improvements have virtually eliminated the possibility of being infected from a vaccine. Or what about this one? More than half of the children who contracted measles had been adequately vaccinated. Recognize the sharpshooter fallacy here? We can use our simulation to show that we would expect it to be more than half while still protecting people against a widespread epidemic. But when people aren't adequately vaccinated, more lives are at risk. Looking at our third pathogen that hits our vaccinated population, you can see that this random cluster of unvaccinated people causes the pathogen to spread much farther than it otherwise would have. To verify this, and to show the very real harm that comes from inadequate vaccination, let's use these different settings for left and right. Let's say that the left-hand population is the sensible one, and so they vaccinate at the 90% rate, whereas the right-hand population has been reading natural health strategies and decided to listen to them instead of their doctors. What happens? Let's watch. Was there ever any doubt? The people on the low vaccination side, even the ones who were vaccinated, died off, except for this one lone very lucky survivor. There was a tiny bit of encroachment into the 90% region, but herd immunity stopped it in its tracks. How can there be any question? And which side do you want to live on? The conclusion from this simulation matches exactly what scientists have found. 
you're protected from infection in a crowd of vaccinated people even if you yourself are unvaccinated. But if you're in a crowd that hasn't been vaccinated, you're in severe danger, no matter how many vaccines you've had. This is why it's important to check with your doctor and make sure your vaccines are up to date. Even if you're an adult, you need a booster of certain vaccines every now and then, for example, pertussis. Adult vaccination boosters are low, and this puts children at an unnecessary risk of the serious health consequences of whooping cough. Vaccines are so cheap and safe that there really is no reason not to.